Namaste, my friend. So in this series, we will be understanding <clears throat> the causes of the happiness. How the mind causes the happiness. But before that, we will continue our simple and easy practice. So, close your eyes. And make your body comfortable. Adjust and align every part of the body. It is always preferable if you do the practice while sitting. As we have done last time, you are a seeker, so it doesn't take a lot of time to be comfortable. So become aware of the entire body. So when I say become aware of the entire body, I can also say look at the entire body mentally or feel the entire body from the top of the head to the toes and experience sensation comfort and steadiness. Why we are doing it to raise our level of awareness? So we get a cognitive ability to look within. Last time we have done this part and now go a little deeper. So what it means by going deeper? It simply means you rise in awareness. So look inside the body, become aware of the space or blankness or darkness inside the body. Become aware that this space has no boundaries. The moment you are aware that this space has no boundaries, you leave the objective reality and the mind goes deeper within. It increases your awareness. You have to listen and do the practice again and again so that each word phrase helps you to dwell deep inside why i say so the knowledge plus the practice both are extremely important if we don't have the right knowledge and clear understanding your practice will fail but you are a seeker I have no doubt about it so the next step as I usually say but we go deeper into that when I say be carefree is the step And I have been explaining, being carefree is free from all the cares of the mind. Who cares? All of us. You will say, my dad, parents, people, no. It is the mind that cares all the time. But if the mind is impulsive, instinctive and habitual, then it cares through the past impression and mostly from the negative impressions of anxiety, duality, conflict. Not only it takes the form of the sensations, but the thoughts accumulated in the reservoir of the mind. So here I give a simile, a metaphor 
to help you understand. <clears throat> you are standing across a road and watching the traffic. Now take this metaphor at the mental level. There is a mental traffic. What is that traffic? It consists of the thoughts, feeling, and images. Maybe from your story, maybe of the future, thought that causes the worry. So we just, that is a traffic, and you are different from the traffic. You are different from the traffic. <coughs> What it means, the way you are standing across the road, you don't enter into the traffic. How we enter into the traffic? Especially with reference to the mind. When the mind says, this is my thought. So what we are doing here? In fact, we are not doing, we are just watching the thoughts are coming and going. And I have a cognitive ability that these thoughts are separate from me, they're different from me. That is why you are looking all these thoughts at a distance. Anything that you look at a distance is di different and separate from you. That is what I mean by being carefree. Pay attention. When I say being carefree, it does not mean becoming carefree. When you are standing across the road, you are already free from the traffic. You see the traffic jam. You see the thoughts are there. A lot of thoughts are there. But still you are free. You are separate from it. It takes time to adjust and assimilate and understand. The deeper the understanding, the better it will be. So what happens in the previous two steps, being comfortable and being carefree, when we separate ourselves not only from the body but also from the thoughts and the wandering mind, it gives us space to bring about a change in our behavior and attitude. What is that change? For example, the mind impulsively, due to the habit, <coughs> puts you into anxiety and you separate yourself. The moment you separate, you are free from it. You are not dictated by it. You are not affected by it. That's what you have, been do you have started doing it. And your message is that you sent me, gave me the sense, and that's why I'm giving you this practice. So in the state of being comfortable, experience of sensation, comfort and steadiness, and being carefree, you are free from the wandering mind. Mind wandering, let it be so. But at the same time, you have a constant awareness of the comfort and steadiness in the body that prevents the mind to go out and you live into that state thought of the anxiety thought of the pleasure thought of the past and present and the future they come and go let them come and go that is what I mean you raise your awareness separation helps you <clears throat> to bring about a change in the behavior and attitude. So we pay more attention and we have been paying more attention to purify the mind. <clears throat> so today <clears throat> purify the mind first look into the forehead in the space you see the space inside the forehead 
pick a point and drop the mantra Om Shanti. Om you can say is the pure consciousness, like an infinite space, and Shanti means the peace. <clears throat> so one part of the mind is dropping Om Shanti. We are not in a hurry. You give a pause, Om Shanti, mentally. Om Shanti, mentally. So every time you are dropping Om Shanti, in fact you are doing it gently with a pause. You are aware of the space between the mantras. One part of the mind. And now the second part of the mind with the second part of the mind you start breathing breathing gently through the rib cage through the nostrils into the rib cage as you inhale expand your rib cage as you exhale squeeze your rib cage but mentally you are dropping Om Shanti <clears throat> Continue. You continue. So now there are two things. As you are breathing, obviously, you will experience some changes. How do you experience those changes? In the form of a sensation, images, or maybe the vision. What should you do? Just accept those changes. But then our crazy mind resist the breathing, continuity of the breathing. <clears throat> there you need an endurance. As you continue, there is a resistance, you recognize it and continue the breathing. Why you continue the breathing, we'll talk later. We'll understand it. You have the tingling or you have the sensation in the mazes during the breathing and dropping the Om Shanti at the same time. Any resistance the mind offers, you endure it and continue doing it. and stop this breathing we will further raise our awareness move the mind on the head and the neck you are aware of the skin of the head and the neck and experience sensation can fair sensation relaxation and stillness mind looking at the right arm looking means feeling or being aware of the right arm 
from the shoulder to the fingertips and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the left arm. <clears throat> Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Move the mind on the middle portion of the body. From the shoulder down in the front to the rib cage and the belly, on the back, the spine and shoulder blades in the spine until the waist. Experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the right leg on the skin of the right leg be there experience sensation relaxation and stillness mind goes to the left leg sensation relaxation and stillness the entire body sensation relaxation and stillness experience the state of sensation relaxation and stillness now you are already living into higher awareness in the state of sensation stillness and as such, there is no resistance at all at this moment. We'll again use another step to further purify the mind. If the mind is limited, contracted inside, it becomes impure. We experience the limitations and if the mind expands, how it expands, we will understand through the mantra. Looking inside the forehead, you are saying mentally three times Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. We'll go to the meaning. Meaning is, let everyone be happy. Now we'll move down and we will reflect on the meaning. Why we say everyone should be happy? Can we make everyone happy? The answer is no. But why we say that? Because happiness is the essential nature of every being. Then what? We are reflecting. We are creating, creating a conviction in the intellect. Happiness is present in all the beings. But how it helps me? So every time you meet a person, your relations near and the dear ones, you are meeting that person with an awareness that happiness is your nature and happiness is the nature of everything. Why? So that your mind does not invite the past impressions and the preferences with the likes and dislikes, with the attachment and detachment. So 
to what happens in then your mind is already free you meet anyone anytime anywhere in any situation you are happy sarve santu niramaya sarve santu niramaya sarve santu niramaya meaning let everyone be in the state of well being everyone is seeking the state of the well being and that comes from the existence same thing we are seeking the well being of everyone it means we are becoming aware of the well being that is they are seeking so i have no right to make anyone stressed reactive so i should not think speak and act in a way that may create some rift what it means i am purifying my mind i am aware i am getting away from the likes and dislikes i believe you are getting it you are a seeker we are doing a hard practice sarve bhadrani pashyantu sarve bhadrani pashyantu sarve bhadrani pashyantu i you he everyone should be blessed and the grace and the blessing should fall upon everyone why we say that for example you and i you all and i supported by the existence all the time even if i have jealousy against you the existence gives you the air to breathe in offers you the space on the earth to live in gives you the space you see that so we create an unnecessary duality in a conflict in our mind so this mantra this line of the mantra says that if i live oh let everyone be blessed by the same existence which is also blessing me the mind becomes pure लेट नन सफर फ्रॉम मेजी इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो इंस्टेड ऑफ अटैचमेंट एंड अवर्शन माई माइंड योर माइंड अवर माइंड is living into that awareness where we shun the miseries so what happens the mind does not think about it mind does not trigger itself from the past impression so what is going to happen the mind is going to purify itself so looking now at the breath no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath breath goes in breath comes out in the state of sensation relaxation and stillness in the body calmness inside mind is free so every time the breath goes in you drop on the breath om shanti when the breath comes out you drop om shanti
We are drawing Om Shanti on the breath incoming and outgoing breath. And now do nothing. Remain as you are. Just in the state of doing nothing and experience the changes. You feel the calmness, stillness, and living in a higher awareness. Gently open your eyes and remain in the state. Why I say so that you are already focused and now what you are going to listen, it will go directly into your head you'll be able to easily assimilate. So maintain that state of calmness and relaxation, attention and awareness. So my friend, last time, in the last session, we understood the mind has a two flow. Do you remember? The Shreya's flow and the Freya's flow. Freya's flow makes the mind impure. Freya's flow makes the mind pure. Shreyas follows what I like and what is pleasant to me. Shreyas flow means what is right and good in my life, in my thought, in my speech and action that I follow. I think I, I took up that topic a couple of times, but last time we have taken it deeply. So as a seeker, we should follow the path of the Shreyas. That brings the integrity in my personality and a self-discipline. The prayers makes me an anxious duality in a conflict. Whenever we have a duality in a conflict in our life, we follow the path of the prayers. We are seeking something from the world outside. Be what I like and pleasant to me. And the path of the prayers what is right and good? I'm conscious. I don't allow what I like, what is pleasant to me, before I screen each and every thought, each and every situation, each and every relationship. That is a natural self-discipline. You need not to follow, strictly follow the discipline. And that kind of a self-discipline leads to self-discovery. Only the path of the shreyas, only the path of the shreyas leads to understanding one's true nature, also the purpose. It helps you to personal growth and that is what is happening in you. It brings a kind of fulfillment. It always keeps you in the state of inner calm and peace. And whenever there is a prayer is working through your mind, outside in your relations, when you wake up in the morning and the mind triggers you to follow the path of the prayers, that provides a temporary gratification or temporary pleasure. And if you follow the path of the shares, you simply transcend the mental fluctuations by consciously living from our true essence. So when you follow the path of the shares, even you don't know, but it helps you to tame your mind naturally. Because your focus is on what is right and good, I will do that. Is anxiety right and good? Is anger right and good? Is jealousy right and good? No. Your instant answer is no. So you are already free. Now I've been thinking about this guy, he inserted. Why you are thinking about that guy? Because you are seeking, you have an expectation from outside, you are seeking the happiness outside. So once you contemplate and reflect, what is right and good? Should I continue to think? No. You follow the path of the shares. What it demands? It demands a constant awareness.
So when you follow the path of the Shreyas, it aligns you with the wisdom. Can I say it again? It is a thoughtful action. Any thoughtful action does not contain an element of duality and anxiety. What happens to the shares? First you recognize the calmness in you and then you are ready to communicate with anyone to deal with any situation in the world. Where is the question of anxiety and duality in a conflict in your life? So what happens when you follow the path of the shares? I would say in an American way, it reduces your anxiety, duality, conflict. It minimizes your laziness. That is what we covered last week. But now today's lesson. So let us talk about a little bit of desire, unending, unending desire, unending suffering. So where I can find the permanent happiness? One question we will deal in detail. And the second question, do you ever question why we have desires and why we have so many desires? Every day we have so many desires. I feel upset. How to, how not to be upset? You see your pets and your, oh, I have to take care. There is another desire. Now I feel a little bit, you know, I have a craving for a coffee. You go to the kitchen. Throughout the day, mind is filled with the desires. So today we will take up the two broad questions at length. Desires unending. And desires unending suffering also. <laughs> but I'm seeking permanent happiness in life. Desire, we will understand, but Remember this and never forget this. Desire, like a chameleon, it changes its shades and the colors in a different situations and relations. What are those shades and colors of a desire? Desire is anger, desire is anxiety, desire is delusion, desire is uh, conflict, desire is jealousy, desire is crime, desire is violence, desire is violence. Chameleon, you know, changes the colors, hardly two or three colors, and this desire changes millions of colors. But then where is the desire? Which desire causes the permanent happiness, peace, love, truth, and wisdom? That is what we are learning. So if you allow these desires to go unattended, <laughs> then desire becomes anger, anxiety, duality, conflict, problem, suffering. So we need to observe, analyze, choose what desire brings suffering and what desire brings happiness. I believe you are getting it. But why we are thinking in terms of the day? Because mind is active in the waking hours. As long as you are in the waking hours, the mind keeps on thinking. And every thought has some element of the desire. We don't give the direction. We allow it to happen. The mind says, now I will take. If you don't give any direction to me, then I will do whatever I like. And that's why. Even in the morning, you become upset. See one example. A person wants to be a millionaire, makes a self-effort, and fails. He stands up again. So why he stands up again? Because of the intellect. And the intellect says this failure leads me to success. 
I have learned a lot. A another guy also wants to be a millionaire. He fails, he commits suicide. <laughs> so one is following the path of the prayers, another is following the path of the fear. Are you getting it? Every time, every moment, any thought that passes across your mind and causes you some anxiety, you have to be alert, you have to consciously observe, analyze, change the face of that thought, change the desire, drop the anxiety, live happy, keep smiling. We need to answer many questions to remove the doubt, remove the doubt, to make a right choice, to develop a conviction and then treat the path to happiness. Are you, are you understanding why it is taking time? We are missing something. Let us explore another question is, do you ever question why we have so many desires? So many desires. I won't say in thousands, but it may be in millions. You want to know the answer? The, the answer is because of the biological drives we have a desire, because of the pleasure-seeking mind we have a desire, because we want to boost our ego, that is why we have a desire, because I feel something lacking, that is why I have a desire. Because of the ignorance, I have a desire. Because of projection, I have a desire. Because of the habit and impulses, I have a desire. All these happens in the mind. Do you know what conclusion you can draw? What I told you, biological drive, pleasure seeking, lacking something, boosting our ego, ignorance, projecting, habitual and tendencies, all causes the desire. Mind is just wandering everywhere. And that is why we have so many thoughts. Do you recognize the mind is undisciplined? Because the mind is undisciplined, that's why one time is a biological drive, other time is a pleasure seeking, third is boosting of ego, fourth time I lack something, fifth is the ignorance, and sixth is the projecting happiness outside in the world, and seventh is again impulsive and instinctive nature, and mind is, keeps on wandering. And then I want to control my mind. How can you control your mind? You are not looking at the real cause of the wandering mind, but you want to control your mind. You control the biological urge, pleasure-seeking mind will take over. You control the pleasure-seeking mind, the boosting your ego desire will take over. Are you confusing? No, no, I'm not confusing you. I'm, we are just understanding. That understanding is very important very important. Now let us go a little deeper, biological drives. We have innate biological drives for things like food, water, shelter, and procreation. So if you follow the path of the shares and you are fairly organized, oh, I have a biological drive to eat food, and the part of the shares, what is right and good is there, you have no problem. Water, no problem. Shelter, no issue. Procreation, no issue, because it follows the part of the shares. Even though it is primal desires for survival, but we are happy with it. We are not carried away by the craving. So two options are there, even in the biological drive. If the mind keeps on wandering, the biological drive will take a negative turn. We will eat what we should not, and we will do what we do not. 
in Kant's meeting the biological right. My friend, you have to sit down and think and contemplate. Why? When you contemplate, so you have, you are putting the mind into a discipline naturally. You think every day until biological drives are given a right and proper direction. Done. Pleasure seeking drive. Yes, even you take an example uh, from understanding from the science. So science says our brain rewards us with the dopamine when we satisfy our desire. Any satisfy palate or food. So the moment you satisfy the desire for the food that you like, brain some releases some chemicals. That is what we say we satisfy our desires. And then we want to satisfy that desire again and again and again and again. Do you remember what the Shea say? What is right and good? But what is right and good with a clear understanding that anything outside is not the source of happiness. We have already covered, I think, two weeks ago. One thing, now second thing. Even if I believe science that I have to satisfy the desire that gives me the pleasure, meditation, Satisfy all your desires by meditation. Even during the practice of meditation, these chemicals will be released in your brain and will give you more satisfaction, deeper satisfaction, independent of anything outside. That is why I've been saying you to that you should be practicing daily. <laughs> Well, then we, we were talking about, yeah, boosting our ego or ego fulfillment. We have many desires to feed our ego, wants for securities, esteem, power, approval, appreciation from others. They, it also gives us some kind of a satisfaction. <coughs> Once satisfied, ego is satisfied in a one event or a situation, it demands more and more. It never says enough is enough. So one day, one person appreciates you, you like. Second day, the same person doesn't appreciate because his mind is already wandering and busy. So you, you feel it's not good. I told you, ego says enough is not enough. And then we are suffering. And the nature of the mind, impulsive nature, habitual nature, that also causes lot of desires. It cannot be fulfilled. Understanding is very important. You, you have to make a list under which categories you have a desire. <laughs> write to me. When you write to me, when you write on the paper, and what you write to me, obviously you are contemplating and reflecting. And that will give an instant understanding. Oh, this is because of this I have an anxiety. Because of this, you know, I got inserted. I feel inserted. This is because of this I'm reacting. And when you contemplate like this, you have reached to a conclusion because of this I am reacting, the reaction goes away. This is what the cognitive ability is. Then I talked about uh, we are lacking something. So feeling of lacking comes from the mind. Ego is behind. So internal feeling of insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness. It is lacking. Lacking, the source is ego deep inside. Then we have <clears throat> ignorance. 
where any desire causes the suffering it is because of the ignorance fundamentally all desires seeking something outside is because of ignorance and the projection together trillions of desire rise in the mind of humans because of the ignorance if i directly say before i explaining in detail desire take root and uh, propagate through association our mind makes between the objects of the world outside and the pleasure then it creates a habit pattern then the biological drive egoic lack projecting fulfillment all takes over and we are lost when you are lost then only you have an anxiety can you become anxiety just now can you become angry tomorrow at 10 am when the 10 am comes to you you cannot become angry you have a smile on your face now let us uh, understand it little deeply desire arises in the human mind in the body through several interconnected mechanisms first is the thought when we think about something over and over anything it creates a desire and when you keep on thinking it generally it creates an attachment or aversion or detachment so what happened i am thinking about something maybe a person or a situation or an event outside so i am already attached or detached to that so it is an association the mind is now associated with that object or experiences so now that it, that association has two elements either it is attachment or detachment So what happens with an attachment i want to possess it what happens with a detachment i don't want to talk to that person i want to throw any object which i don't like which i hate <clears throat> we are understanding how the desire takes shape and then it plays with us last week we understood how the mind leads us or how we have to lead our mind so we are going deeper in this session so first is i thought thought mind keeps on thinking about the object or a person or a situation attachment and detachment then the second factor is the association third factor is the projection <clears throat> after association i keep on projecting happiness and peace on the other why it happens it is a lack of self knowledge i am in ignorance and then the fourth is because i feel deficiency i feel in sense of hollowness inside that is why i am seeking peace and happiness outside i feel a sense of insecurity that is why i am seeking happiness outside and then it becomes habitual it becomes impulsive it is instinctive and then we are upset why we are upset without any reason <laughs> we are upset without any reason. without any reason no no i have a reason all those reasons are false once we have that conviction in our mind we are already free just take another example in the same way i have a biological drive i'm hungry eat food to live 
don't give the food to your palate I just become aware I am giving a food to meet my hunger. There is no problem. But if you are giving a food to your palate, your hunger will never go. Same thing, you know, biological drives. You know, it may be hunger, it may be thirst, it may be libido, and other biological drives. We also have memories. Memories trigger. Oh, I enjoyed the pleasure with that food. Let me have that one. What I said today is that I have to be conscious. I follow the path of the Shreyas practically during the waking hours. I'm conscious. You see then what happens? You are taming the mind, your undisciplined mind is being disciplined. So I have one million desire. I cannot fulfill all the desires in one lifetime. Maybe in hundred lives, I cannot fulfill all the desires. One thing. <coughs> Second thing is the desire fulfillment. As such, there is no word as desire fulfillment. Repeat desire is possible, but if the repeat desire is there, it is it is it is it is greed. But if the greed is there, that repeat desire, the greed results into delusion. And delusion gives you the ignorance. So I have created a pathway to suffering in my life. Ask yourself, who is responsible for your suffering? <laughs> who is responsible for your suffering? Because I come in contact with any object desiring that I will be happy. I have associated and projected happiness in that object where I 100% know that object does not contain happiness, is not the source of happiness, and still my mind is running after it. No doubt, I get a temporary pleasure, I want to repeat it, the, with that object or a person or a situation. As such, there is no desire fulfillment at all. Simple answer, I told you, we have so many so many factors which creates millions and millions of desires in our life. So millions of desires, I have millions of the thoughts, I have millions of attachment, craving, and the mind keeps on wandering all the time. Only one thing is required to follow the path of the shares. What is right and good, I have to live consciously, I have to live in a waking state. So what we want to stress into our mind that should result into a conviction, as such there is no desire fulfillment. <coughs> I eat my food. After a few hours you again need food. <laughs> oh, 
Now I slept for eight hours. Today I had to again. You have to sleep the next day. Desire fulfillment as such is not there. We continue to meet our basic needs, following the path of the shreyas, what is right and good, as far as the food, our biological needs are concerned. We take a right and proper action the moment we find there is a deep association, which is the cause of the attachment and the duality, we instantly say, okay, let me find out. Let me see it. Let me check it. Why we check it? The moment you start checking the wandering mind, period. Because you raise your level of awareness and then you intellectually understand. When your understanding is there, as long as that understanding is realized by the mind, it is already gone. No doubt, we have to need to do the practice regularly until we reach to that state of awakening where no desire pricks you, gives you the pain and the suffering because they live too far from you. Even it appears they are in your mind, that they live too far in your And that is why I gave you the practice where there is a lot of contemplation. Contemplation and reflection is there. Once you come out of that reflection and you understand today's talk, it will take your mind settled in the shreyas. And then we will also talk about the prayers where the prayers is required and how much it is. Thank you.